Good morning, everyone. This is Liz Nichols from Liz Nichols, A Woman in Motion. I uh, have a business that supports women with epilepsy, and uh, I'm here today with two fabulous other people that are coaches for uh, those with epilepsy, and uh, let's bring them on now, have them introduce themselves. Stacy. good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> Good, good. Um, yeah, intro introduce yourself um, and so everybody knows a little bit about you. And then after that, we'll go to Stefan. All right. Um, my name is Stacy Chalemi and I am a coach and I am an author and a, um, a health specialist. And what I do is I help people um, improve their life uh, through different natural alternatives. So I help people help, um, with their health and with their lifestyle, because a lot of times we don't realize that our lifestyle impacts our health. And, you know, the both of them co coincide with each other. And I recently wrote um, three books, um, one having to do with epilepsy. It's called Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. And the other one is about empowerment and to teach people, um, you know, let, you know, empower yourself. Don't let your condition empower you because I want people with all different conditions to really understand that we can't let our conditions empower us, that we need to be able to live a healthy, happy life and be able not to focus on our, our, the things in life that might be pulling us down, but to focus on the positive things. And I created a positivity and gratitude journal just recently. And that kind of helps people, you know, sometimes like we were talking about, we don't realize the little things in life, how much they mean to us until they're taken away from us. And then we realize, you know, how much such th little things in life have actually, you know, um, actually helped us, you know, get through the day and make us happy, healthy, and productive. So, you know, that journal kind of kind of refreshes our our body and our mind to give us understand what what we really need to focus on, get our priorities in line. So that's what I'm doing, and uh, you know, it's great to see you guys. I love talking to you guys. Oh, I know. Me too. And Stefan, over to you. Good morning. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Liz. It's amazing to be with everyone today because we get out there and we help others uh, with epilepsy. And I never knew that would be my my ultimate goal. You know, when I had epilepsy and had seizures for 20 years, I tried to live without it. And it was what was on the outside that was changing me on the inside. And I just thought of that today yes. when I'm in the gym. I'm actually in my individual sauna here. Just finished up, but I said it's not what is it's on the outside of us. It's what's on the inside of us that matters. Yes. Because if you let what's on the outside of you affect you, you become that. And that yes. becomes you. You want this outside of you to become you. Yes. Right? 100%. So the sauna, the, the sweat. Yeah, exactly. The, the sweat, the steam, the, you know, you're burning off calories. This is a part of life. And that's why we're all here today. I'm working on my second book called Thank You to the 1000th Power. And it's about coming back to the <laughs> ultimate dream of from the FUs to thank yous. I got my little shirt here and that's what it says. And somebody came up like, oh, I thought that was a flower. And because they see it from afar, it looks like a flower, huh? And so when you pull up a little closer, it says from the FUs to thank you. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I thought that was a great analogy because they saw the beauty in it. Instead of people saying, well, F you, I was kind of concerned like if I wore a shirt like that. No, it's the F use the thank yous. So that's what you know what I for. want a shirt. I want you to send okay. me a shirt because <laughs> I and love I'll it. I'll send you a, a, a one of my books too, a, a signed copy of my my one book, and you send me all thirty of yours. No, I'm just <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> or at least one. The, the one you're talking about. That's what we're here today. Is I, we kind of came up with the idea right now, right, to talk about nutrition, coffee in the morning, epilepsy, what affects you. So let's get on that topic with Stacy. So. Take it away and we'll join in on what you do or what you felt with coffee and caffeine. Yeah. So, you know, with my medications, I take three different medications to cr control my um, epilepsy. And I, you know, my doctor had recently changed up my medication and, you know, um, it made me feel better. But, you know, it, at nighttime, it makes me tired, but it gives me a great night's sleep. But sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I still feel that little bit of tiredness and then it wakes, it wears off. And 
and throughout my life, my medication, I noticed the difference when I, when the medic, the medication will pull my energy level down a little bit. And so what I was doing, I was using caffeine as an alternate to give me that boost. But what people don't realize, we, everyone loves caffeine. It's so popular. You see Rook, you see Starbucks, you see Dunkin' Donuts, and we keep drinking the coffee to give us that little bit of a, of an energy boost, but they don't realize that, you know, it's also dehydrating us and not, most people don't drink enough of water to begin with. So what happens is we get that high and then we crash and we come down and we start feeling exhausted. And a lot of times people are at work, so there's nowhere to sleep and there's nowhere to rest. And they're just like pulling themselves so sluggish through the day. And I've been one of those those people. And I was drinking, you know, five, six cups of coffee, um, you know, just anytime I started feeling it was, it became like an addiction. Well, my yeah. coffee, where's my coffee, you know, I know. And I get a <laughs> cup of coffee, you know, and uh, I was actually hurting myself. And what I, what I did was, is I, st- I switched. Um, I still drink some coffee. I have like maybe one or two cups during the day, but I used to drink like five or six, you know, so there's a big difference between five or six and one or two. And I switched it out to matcha tea. And what I noticed is when I started drinking matcha tea, matcha tea, it has caffeine in it, but it has green beans instead of the caffeine beans. And I started losing my urge to want to drink coffee. I don't know. You know, it just, I just didn't, you know, I I enjoyed drinking the matcha tea. um, And I didn't have, I only had one, one glass of matcha tea a day. And I completely lost my urge to drink caffeine. And then I started drink. I started taking in the morning, I started taking pomegranate, which helps renew the cells in your body. Because as we get older, you know, our, our, our cell development of cells kind of slow down, everything slows down and we can be, and that's why we, we start to feel, you know, a little bit like slower and not as focused. So pomegranate and ginseng, those two things gave me a really good boost. And I would also do, um, uh, beet, beetroot, and I would do I would do um, apple cider vinegar, and the apple cider vinegar helped with the weight loss, and helped with the energy, and it helped, and so did the the beetroot. And taking those things in the morning kind of gave me that energy, and it kind of I and I didn't need all that coffee. So slowly, I was drinking maybe one cup of coffee. I stopped using sugar. I was drinking black coffee, and just you know, and I just wasn't. I started really feeling much better, you know, health wise. Yeah. Liz, did you have any experience like that or same thing or your coffee is how many a day would you say? Yeah, the um, actually I'm just pretty much doing one a day, um, but I have my water both. (laughs) 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 Um, I actually do a weird combination. Well, I don't know if it's weird, but I put in um, cream and cinnamon and uh, that's very good. Yeah. And so it's got cinnamon and and, uh, uh, yeah, milk and coffee and couple other things I stick it in the blender and I froth it so it's like a brilliant Ooh. cappuccino yeah yeah but I only do one a day um but that's interesting uh yeah I have one a day at the most um yeah I guess it's, I just I'm addicted to it that's right? a powerful one because I see you before and after within three minutes and you're like oh a different person you wake up <laughs> I know right when I first came on um, earlier yeah. I was like good morning <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and now I'm like, woo, here goes the day, right? So, yeah. So, I, I, I effect too. It's like, oh, I'm drinking this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, um, Stacey, I love all that information about things to do in the morning. I'm going to have to try some of that. And it lasts throughout the day. It's, it's amazing, but you don't feel you, you you don't feel any type of crash when you start taking the pomegranate and the ginseng, and you do it on a daily basis, and you start drinking, you know, maybe one glass of matcha tea or something like that. You know, some people are like ooh, they, you know, but then they try it and they actually like it because there's so many different types. Like you said, you put cinnamon in it. You could put cinnamon. You could put vanilla in it, and it yeah. gives such a, a nice, you know, flavory taste to it. So there's lots of ways that you could drink it, and you don't you feel energetic throughout the day. You know, you might maybe around nine or 10 o'clock, you start coming down and, you know, you start feeling tired, but it, it holds you up for quite some time. And Stefan, you just gave up coffee. You're my hero. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> Stacy, when you were talking about it, what it reminded me of was why that popular drink came out about 10 years ago, five hour. And I was, Oh, heavy, I remember I, that. Yeah. I was a heavy, heavy alcoholic in 2010, 11. I worked in the bar gaming industry for trivia games. So I was calling bars all day, all over the U.S. 
<laughs> and I would be hungover when I showed up at work, literally that bad, like throwing up sometimes. I was drained. I was drinking water. I was trying to feel better. But then I would have to, a coffee helped. And then I crashed. And right. I started discovering five hour. And it was like perfect because that's how they made their money was, you know, yeah. three, four cups of coffee about by noon. But I didn't want any more coffee. I didn't like that taste in the afternoon. So I started drinking five yeah. hour. But that's a total, my heart rate picked up. I had heart palpitations. I had headaches. I wasn't drinking enough water. It just seems like there's so much wrong with it, especially when you drink two of those and four cups of coffee. Yeah. And then you go drink beer that night. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> help. It was, it's, it's a lifestyle that we have to change. So oh, yeah, yeah, I just gave up coffee. You know? I, you know what happened to me was, do you know those little, the, they had these little powders that you can, I forgot the name of it, but it gives you energy while you exercise, you know, because a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, especially when you first start exercising, it's hard to get into the mode. And they had these little, it was powder, you put it in, in, a, in water, had flavor to it, and you drink it, and, and you gave it, you gave you so much energy. And I never bothered really to check, but when I did check, it had so much caffeine in it and I was using it for a while. And then what happened was I couldn't get to sleep at night. It took me yeah. like a month to, to wean off of it where I could actually go to sleep. I was up till five o'clock in the morning, tossing and turning, tossing and turning. And I realized it's that stupid powder. All that caffeine just built up in my system over time. And I had so much caffeine in my system that I couldn't get a good night's sleep. I was tossing and turning. It didn't matter what I did or, you know, what I took. I could not fall asleep. It was because of all that, the, all that caffeine for months I was taking in that little powder. Well, yeah, some of it is definitely affecting us. And I have a chocolate addiction that I do at night. And sometimes <laughs> it feels like uh, the sugar helps me sleep actually a little bit. Oh, you know, yeah. The healthy Dark chocolate. Oh, choc kind of, dark like, chocolate. Choc yeah. yeah, dark chocolate. So I think what happened was with the caffeine, me drinking it all day, uh, I was on a pretty good routine of sleeping. And lately in the past week, I've kind of been, it's been different, but I'm pushing through it. You know, I get up every two or three hours. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, it's not the same, but I have to accept it because um, we have to realize our body's not adapting to it or it's just not good for us. Right. And that's great that you see it. And Liz, you see it too. You kind of become aware of what something is doing to you, whether it's alcohol or drugs, or eat caffeine, anything, especially with epilepsy. We want to hear back from people on here to subscribe, like, and share on our channel here. And also ask questions, put things on the YouTube channel about questions, reach out to Liz, reach out to Stacy, and ask questions about this. And we could help people, you know, all around the world that have questions about whatever epilepsy, caffeine, things like that. And a lot of people tell me too, is that they can't, they can't go to sleep at night because they can't stop thinking. You know, a lot of people are always worrying and they're worrying about what they have to do tomorrow. I got to do this. I got to finish this. I got to go here. I got to do this and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I'm, I'm like that. I have to admit, I'm like that too. It's like, you know, I'm a doer. And once I get started, I want to keep doing it until I finish it. But there's, there's not enough hours in the day to finish things. And then we have to realize at one point of our life, we have to say, okay, it's, it's, it's five o'clock or it's six o'clock. I have to put everything away. I'll get it done tomorrow. And that's hard for a lot of people, including myself to do. And then you think about it and then you keep thinking about it. And then people have a hard time going to sleep because they can't put their mind at rest. And, you know, there are yoga, there actually, there are yoga exercises that you can do to help you fall asleep at night and you can go onto YouTube and you can put sleep poses for yoga and, you know, and it will come up and there are certain stretches that will actually start to make you relaxed and tired before you go to bed to help you sleep. If you're one of those type of people. Yeah, that's actually, I'm going to look into that because I sit down at the uh, end of a long day and I just relax and have you know, a glass or two of red wine with my dinner. Yeah. And that seems to just kind of the food and the wine. And then, you know, I, by the time I go to bed, I'm out cold within seconds, but um, doing yoga is probably much healthier than having a glass or two of wine. <laughs> I actually, I, I used to like to drink wine at night because it put me to sleep. But then I also started to notice that my stomach was getting bigger. After a while, like all the sugar in the in the wine was actually, I was putting on pounds. And then one day I went on the scale. I said, oh my God, you know, and, you know, so I had to try to find a healthier alternative, you know, because I used to love my wine. And then I started taking a new medication and it interacted with wine. So I had to cut out wine completely because, you know, you really, 
if, if something is not agreeing with your body, you have to just, you know, you have to, you have to stop. You have to, you know, you can't push your body when your body says this doesn't agree with me. You can't, you can't keep doing it because you like it. You have to do what your body wants, not what you want to do. Well, it's funny. It's interesting. You said that because again, I enjoy, you know, a glass or two of wine, red wine, you know, pretty much every night. And yeah. I love it, but I did, I stepped on the scale, <clears throat> excuse me, last week. And I went, Oh, I've gained eight pounds in the last <laughs> couple of months. Well, what's that about? Right. I'm yeah. like, Oh, you know, so there it goes, you know, you've gained seven, eight pounds in the last couple of months, whatever. And you're right. It's probably the sugar in the wine. <laughs> yeah. I, I put on <laughs> during COVID, wine. I was drinking oh. wine and I gained 10 pounds. I gained, yeah, I had to, and I lost a lot of it and it was, you know, it was all the sugar and the wine and I never even thought about it, you know, and I had glass, gla you know, one or two glasses and, you know, I, I didn't realize, but so I went on the scale and then my eyes opened up and I was like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> no, it's funny you mentioned that. Cause I, I just went through that. So I think maybe I'll uh, be cutting back on the wine <laughs> yeah. and doing the, uh, the yoga instead to, kind of chill out, relax at the end of a long day. So yeah. Oh my gosh. Such great conversations. Um, I think we just lost Stefan. We did. Uh, I'm sure he'll be back though. I, I yeah. think that the, um, I love our talks. This is great. That's so much great information. And we'll have to make sure that we share, you know, all our websites and all our contact information. Yeah. So people can reach out. Um, and you've got a really cool website that I, I check out and, uh, um, the herbal guide is that the you've got great have, products, really. Great I have products. A, I have the the complete herbal guide, which is my blog, and you know that that website is just dedicated to new information that I put on every day about different all different health ma matters, and epilepsy, diabetes, cancer, everything. You know, even people who just want to improve their fitness and are looking for ways, you know, to help them. And and if you're middle age, you know, we, we can't do what the twenty year olds are doing you know we can't go to the gym and pump pump the way they pump so there's other alternatives other exercises because all you really need is you know 15 to 30 minutes a day of you know nice you know moderate exercise and you will notice a big difference in your body and you know so i show those type of things and then i have stacychilemi.com where i have my coaching and all the different services that i provide to help people and i just created a uh, a website for my books and for other people's books and it's called health and wellness publications where i devote it to books that help people and and helps you know helps them mentally physically and spiritually and i'm really excited can i show you do you mind if I show oh, you, go, oh, that's great. Go go ahead. The uh... I I just came out with um, a journal. It's called the Positivity and Gratitude Journal. And what I noticed is it, I. I noticed it when I couldn't drive, when my doctor said, you know, Stacy, you're having seizures. You can't drive until we can get your seizures under control. And that little thing about driving kind of, I felt imprisoned in my own home. Something so simple had such a big impact on my life. And that's when I started to really learn about gratitude and, and looking at the positive things in life. Cause I, I don't think I would have got through it if I didn't focus on the positive and I wasn't grateful for the things I had around me like my family when I, when I went outside the trees nature you know all the little things and mm -hmm. I had to I had to take my mind and focus on the positive and be have gratitude for the things I do have and not focus on what I don't have so mm -hmm. I created a journal to help people who are struggling with the same thing and it talks about how you can create a journal yourself and and it has like different things in it where you could actually write and and help yourself do exercises and and this is the book I was telling you about that I will send you and it's called epilepsy. You're not alone. And I wrote uh, the, the book um, years ago and I just rewrote it to make it more um, up to date. And it talks about to show people that we're not alone. You know, so many people feel alone and they feel embarrassed to talk about it. And it's not talked about enough in our society. It really, you know, people need to really, you know, talk about it because they don't, I don't think people really understand how many people have epilepsy and there still is a stigmatism, you know, people get yep. scared, you know, 
when they see people with epilepsy, or they might say, I don't know if she could do that. What happens if she'll have a seizure, you know, and that's happened to me in my life, you know, so, you know, this talks about, you know, how we're not alone. It shares other people's stories, how they got through it, and what I learned from other people, and how I got through it. So it has like different techniques and different ways to learn how to actually cope with epilepsy, because I get mad because you know what, we go onto the internet, people, you look up epilepsy, you see, you see what epilepsy is about, you see the treatment, the symptoms, blah, 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 blah. But where do you find websites that talk about coping mechanisms, how to cope with it, how to live with it? It's, a, you know, it, it, it affects you mentally and physically. So many times I went on Facebook, and you see people with bruises and, th- and broken bo- bones and people who are mentally um, just totally distorted by the disorder because it, it, it has shooken them in so many different ways mm-hmm. and parents and caregivers who love these people, but they just don't know what the next step is. How do I take care of these people? What can I do? I feel powerless. And the person going through it feels like their life is over. They can't do this. They can't do that. And you, yes, you can, you know, you just have to learn. It's a step-by-step process and you can get there. You just have to, you know, and it's not going to have happen overnight because a lot of people want, you know, they want to start doing something. And in a couple of days, they want to get, get from A to Z. It's, it's a process, just like everything in life is. You want to yeah. feel better. You start from the beginning and it's going to take time, but you'll see the differences as you go along. And that's what I try to teach to people. And then I talked about, I wrote a book about empowerment and and empowering yourself and not having to, for people, don't let your conditions empower you because so many people no matter what the condition is, you find people get very depressed. They get very um, angry. Why does this happen to me? And they feel like, you know, they, they just want to give up. And I'm saying, don't give up. You have a lot to be grateful for. You have a lot of things in life you still can do. As long as you're positive and as long as you know how to use the, you know, the, the power of positivity, you could do anything you want. And people sometimes don't realize that, but we can and we will, you know, and you just need people like us to show them that direction and show them how. And, you know, anything is possible in life. I don't give up. I don't, you know, if, if one path is not working, I find another path, you know, and as long as we're happy, just like you guys were saying, as long as we're happy with what is inside of us, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter how we look on the outside. It's how we feel on the inside that matters. Absolutely. I love that. And Stefan. Hey, you're back. (laughs) You're back. I got lost in the sauna. I, the phone got too hot, and I was in the sauna. <laughs> <laughs> hey, things get too hot. Sometimes things get too hot in life. You know, I love analogy. So it got way too hot in there, and the phone went burnt. <laughs> so I just meditated, and I love how I do this. I know I'm complimenting myself, but we can all do this. I used to be like, ah, the phone, God, you know, you get all pissed off about the computer, the phone, and you got you got a you know a light that goes off right here, just like the sunlight. And it says, just be calm. I just meditated. I reset the phone. I came back on. Right. And I just, it got through it. And I didn't, you know, that's what it was meant to be. You two talk and (laughs) things happen in life. I want to use this analogy too, as you were saying, Stacey, because sometimes we we are told what to do. And this area right here, right turn only, one way only, you know, you're driving down a road and you have to go that way. And people are in the road of life and they have to go a certain way when you have epilepsy. You have to take medication. You have to not drive you know you have to obey the laws and you get things taken away from you and you're told what to do and that can be the hardest thing for people to understand oh yeah this f you f you f this and they (laughs) they don't understand how to deal with it that's what we're here for especially and i just had somebody message me yesterday from kenya and africa and he is dealing with his dad who has epilepsy for years and didn't want to take any medication, didn't want to do anything about it. It's fine. It's fine. But he keeps having seizures. He said, how do I get him to take the medication? So that's a good topic here or just that's yeah. kind of what happens to people in general, right? 
Oh, definitely. You know, a lot of people are in denial because they know once they, you know, they accept that there is something wrong, then they have to approach it. And, you know, it's a, it's a scary thing. And some people don't want to, they don't want to deal with the problem. People are afraid of change too. You know, so many people don't want to improve themselves because they're afraid of what's on the other side. What's going to happen if I take this medicine? What's going to happen this and that and blah, 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 you know? And some people are just old school. You know, there's so many times I'm like, dad, you need to do this. You need to do that. And he's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're not. You know, and it's hard when it's old school to change their mind because they are, you know, they, they, they live life and they think they know it all, but then you have to kind of like just work with them and not tell them what to do, but, you know, very softly try to explain, you know, you know, this is what could happen. I care about you. I want to help you, you know, and I don't want to see this X, Y, and Z happen to you. I want you to be here for me. And if, if you hit your head or if you fall down, you might not get up and I need you. I need you here with me and please just work with me. And they might feel the sympathy, you know, not the sympathy, they, they might, they might feel the compassion. They want to, they please you. They want to, you know, they don't want to, you know, go, you know, they, they want to, they want to make you happy because they're your, 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 they're the father and you're the child and they love you and they want to be there for you. So that you have to try to change their mindset. Like you said, reset the brain, you know? Yeah. This is such, I love our conversations. The, um, uh, and to everybody listening, we're doing these pretty much every week. Um, we're also interviewing other people. So definitely you've got to check out our Facebook uh, page and our Facebook private group and on all of our websites. There's lots of resources out there. Um, and we're all here to help others with epilepsy. So um, any final thoughts, Stefan? Yeah, that's a good point. I wanted to bring this up in our meeting too. And this is a, a good group meeting to have is to invite people out there to um, tell their story, you know, reach out to us and message us on Facebook here and our group. And if you have an epilepsy story or if you know others, so I want to have like, you know, have people coming into us and then every Friday we interview them and maybe Monday we do our little thing, but at least once a week, we have our regular Friday event with the three of us. And then maybe one or two others that have epilepsy because also people dealing with it just reminds me so much of AA and Alcoholics Anonymous, the Al-Anon part of it is the family members that are affected and the yeah. people that say he, he won't change, you know, he won't take medication. Uh, this is something that they have to understand that they shouldn't be doing it for themselves. Like you said, Stacey, they should do it for others around them. Do you want, you know, to help your daughter out or your son out because they're dealing with your epilepsy and right. they look at it differently that way. It's not like take your medication or else it's basically your denial of epilepsy and seizures is affecting others. So wake up. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'll give you a great example. Like my my grandfather, um, he had an adverse um, effect and, and he got uh, on, on a medication and he got really sick and his kidneys failed and they needed to put him on dialysis. And if he didn't go on dialysis, he would have um, died. And he did not want to go on dialysis. He didn't want to spend the rest of his life, you know, going three days a week to dialysis. And they had to have a sit down talk, the family. And they said, we want you here. The grandkids want you here. You know, we, we want you, we, we, you know, we love you and we don't want you to leave us. And, you know, and, you know, we need you, we need you. And, you know, that's what made him go on dialysis because he had got to a point where he had rather just suffer and go to the heavens, cross over to the heavens, than have to be on dialysis. And, you know, with epilepsy, you know, you could hit your head and not wake up. You, so anything could happen, you know, you could have an injury and, and something could happen. You could, you know, you know, a hard hit on the head can cause dementia. You know, there's so many different things that could happen. If you don't take your medication, you know, um, you know, your body becomes addicted to a lot of this medication. And if you try to just stop it or do your own, become your own doctor, a lot of bad things could happen. And, you know, we need to educate these people and they're, you know, and, and tell them what the consequences could be and tell them how much we love them and how much we want to be there for them. And once they, they hear that, 
they don't want to let you down, especially if they have love for these people, then they're not going to want to let you down. And you have to be on work on their compassion on and approach things in a different way. This yeah, is so good. Like, you know, again, to everybody out there, come and join us because there's lots of great, you know, information that can be shared here. Um, so definitely check out the websites, the Facebook group. Um, any final thoughts, anybody, before we uh, log off for the day? I have to go yeah, to work. Stacy. yeah, real quick, Stacy. you said something that reminds me, of all the writing I'm doing in my book is the old you versus the new you. And the yeah. old you says, I don't want to change. I don't want to change. I, that was my alcohol. That was my gambling. That was my addiction. That was my escapism. I don't have epilepsy. I had brain surgery. I'm fine. I can drink again. Two DUIs, jail homelessness later, I go, well, maybe I should change, you know? Yeah. And some people never wake up and they just die because I'm not going to dialysis. And we have, I, I work in assisted living. One of our residents was, was the same way two years ago. He didn't want to go. I could, well, would you rather die or go to dialysis? Die? Dialysis. There you go. I just thought of that. But yeah. he, said, he said, oh, I, I, he couldn't process it. Took him a couple of days. Okay. Okay. So he went. Now he's going three times a week and he's, he's better. He's a lot better. You know, he's yeah. living. <laughs> That's a better thing. That's about yeah, it. Though, 100%. Me. When they realize, you know, th that they that it doesn't, you know, that people love them and there are people that want them there, you know, some people like we like I talk about, some people feel alone, you know, and they have to realize that there are other people out there. And even the support groups on Facebook, if you find a good supportive group on Facebook, you know, um, you know, you could get a lot of help. You know, a lot of people are embarrassed because they don't want other people to know that they're posting. But if you go onto one of those private groups where everybody has the same problem, you know, you, you don't feel embarrassed because these people are going through the same things. So my suggestion to people, you know, if you're embarrassed to talk to other people, you could either, you know, directly message us because nobody else is going to see it or go to groups where everybody has the same problem and they can relate to you. Okay, so this is awesome again, and um, um, have a great day, everybody out there, and uh, yes. you guys will see you again on Friday, <laughs> and uh, have a wonderful day, thanks, bye you guys, see you later, bye guys, bye, take care, bye.